Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. This time I'm going to be talking about warehouse optimization in Snowflake. So how do you go about tuning the database when there are no indexes, limited options available to tune the database itself? Snowflake prides itself on its simplicity and the ability to reduce administration overhead and just work straight out the box. But at some stage your queries may become overly complex, the number of users are going to increase as well as your data and at that point you may start running into some problems. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make sure your warehouses are set up and configured for optimal use and to help you understand those usage patterns where you need to make changes. As ever guys if you find these videos useful really appreciate it if you like and subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified I release new content every week. Okay so this week we're going to talk about warehouse optimization in Snowflake why it's important, what problem does it solve, and how you can interpret it, your own usage patterns within your, your environment and make decisions upon those. So what problem are we solving for here? So how do you tune the Snowflake data warehouse when there are no indexes and limited options available to tune the database itself? Snowflake was designed for simplicity to reduce administration overhead and work straight out the box. At some stage, however, your data volumes and user base may well reach a tip, tip and point where you need to get your hands dirty. One of the easiest ways, obviously, to improve query performance is just to scale up to a bigger warehouse, but as we'll see, potentially it's a poor strategy and quite costly over the longer term. So let's have a chat about why warehouse optimization is important. So it's really important that you experiment with different sizes of warehouses up front to avoid incurring additional charges when and wasting resources. It's crucial to balance tune and the SQL within your queries against the number of concurrent queries your solution can cater for. So what does that mean? So that basically means that there's a balance and a trade-off between tuning the SQL within your queries and optimizing each individual queries versus scaling up your warehouse and providing more resources or scaling out your warehouse if it's a multi-cluster warehouse to provide greater throughput and concurrency. So taking one approach isn't always the uh, the best one. Sometimes it may be one or the other. Sometimes it may be a combination of both depending on what the problem is. So ensuring you leverage the virtual warehouses most effectively means you can reduce the risk of queries queuing while reducing latency. So let's have a look at an example scenario. Imagine you've got an ETL process, which is simply a series of tasks executing queries one after another against an extra small warehouse. One solution to improve concurrency is to scale up to a bigger virtual warehouse to complete the work faster. But this will only work for so long because at some stage, Using that approach, the bottleneck will move elsewhere, leaving unused resources on your virtual warehouse. A better approach would be used to use a multi-cluster warehouse and design your ETL tasks to run in parallel. So that really means that your ETL process can take advantage of running in parallel and your warehouse can scale up and down on demand, optimizing cost and performance. So let's just have a look at a, at a real world um, scenario now. So in this example, on this graph, you can see there's a performance and cost sweet spot during the point where we reach the large virtual warehouse size. So the, the, the bars in blue are the credits used and how much we're spending to execute this particular workload, while the line in black is the workload execution time measured in seconds. And you can see that as we start to scale up our warehouse from extra small where the query is taken, 230 240 seconds to execute as we start to scale up we start to definitely see a significant improvement which is quite material in terms of improving the execution time however once we move from a large to an extra large we see that curve start to flatten out while the credits that we're spending starts to increase exponentially so this is why it's really important to test with different warehouses sizes because at some stage there's only so much compute in memory that you can throw the query before your performance gains start to plateau even though you're starting to incur significantly higher costs if you click on the warehouses tab in the snowflake web ui you'll see a list of all of your warehouses and by clicking on one of those warehouses, it will drill through into a display which shows your warehouse load over time. It shows the relationship between running and queuing queries over time as a stacked bar chart. So here's an example of what that looks like, where the running queries are in blue and the orange signifies queuing queries over a time range. 
And there's a little slider as well at the bottom of this pane that you can move um, and drill into certain areas where you may have been having a problem. I just want to touch upon the Snowflake Expert Bootcamp, which I'm starting on October the 12th. I'm limiting places to just 20, and I've only got one or two slots left. Um, this course takes a real deep dive into some of the topics I discuss um, briefly on, on this YouTube channel. If you do find this useful and you really want to get into the detail of how you can use some of the capabilities of Snowflake, in the real world, in your own environments, then basically I've packaged up all my knowledge and experience of using Snowflake um, since 2017 across a range of implementations to ultimately help as many people as I can. And this is where the, the expert bootcamp comes from. So if, you, if you're interested in that, drop me an email. My email's at the bottom of the screen. There's a link also below in the YouTube video. Schedule a call with me and, uh, and let's have a chat about it and see if it can help you out as well. OK, so let's have a look at some different profiles of warehouse issues over time so we can understand what good and bad looks like. So first of all, let's start with the good. So the usage pattern below shows a well utilized warehouse. While you can see some queuing of queries signified in orange on the graph, the elements are really quite minimal in comparison to the executing queries. So a small amount of queuing like this on a well utilized warehouse doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. You, can, you can't always avoid queuing queries and some days and sometimes you may get a, um, an influx of queries, which is um, you just can't account for all of the time. So this is what a good profile looks like on a well-used warehouse. And this would be something like um, where data consumers are querying it throughout the day, um, running queries to run dashboards or get data to, for their analytical processes. Quite a different chart now, but this is another scenario of a good one. And um, the gaps on this chart here highlight when there aren't any queries executing. But in this case, the warehouse is set to auto suspend. So it's sitting in a suspended mode and importantly, not consuming any credits. So a couple of example use cases where you might see a pattern similar to this is for intraday micro batch run of data or sporadic event based messages which land in an S3 bucket for example that could trigger Snowpipe to load the data into Snowflake so if you can imagine we've got some event data loading in an S3 bucket periodically throughout the day uh, Snowpipe picks it up takes our auto resumes our warehouse we run a query and then we shut down and that even though this graph looks very different to the previous one the workload is also quite different and so this pattern matches our workload really well so looking at the graph is only one side of the story you also need to look at what workload your warehouse is serving so what does bad look like so let's have a look at the bad one so in this chart you can see there's a lot of unused resources signified by the amount of white space the amount of headroom at the top of this chart so from looking at this graph, we can make a couple of observations. So there's a relevant, uh, sorry, a rel relative number of small queries being executed in comparison to the size and resources available in the warehouse. The warehouse is frequently online throughout the day, um, but being underutilized resulting in credits being unnecessarily consumed. So we could take a couple of approaches to improve utilization here. If we assume the warehouse is a medium size, for example, we could look to reduce the size of the warehouse gradually over time and continually review the utilization pattern following that change. This may well result in less resources being wasted and a reduction in operating costs. Alternatively, if we had more than one warehouse of a similar profile within our environment, we could even consider combining those workloads onto a single warehouse. That might give us greater economies of scale where we're removing the unused headroom from each virtual warehouse while maximizing the available resources in just the one. So in summary, experiment with different warehouse sizes and run tests using real workloads. Don't forget to take cash out of the equation by setting that off at a session level. Regularly review your warehouse load profiles to spot problems early and take proactive corrective intervention before it becomes a problem. And then always, always keep the end goal in mind. So what it is here, it's all about balancing costs, which is effectively credit consumption in the Snowflake world with performance. I just want to make you aware of a few of the helpful resources that I've got that can um, support you in your Snowflake journey. The first one is I've got a Udemy course, 
which has taken over 2,000 students and helped them pass uh, the certification. There's a link in the comments below in the video. Also very um, active on LinkedIn and I post a lot of valuable content on there. So please, if you don't already follow or connect with me, definitely you can find me there. And if you find these videos useful, I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe and drop a comment below on any future ideas that you have. Finally, I'd just like to mention I've got a new book coming out soon and early next year, early 2022. And, it, and that's where I package up all my real world knowledge and experience and put those kind of formulas and recipes I've got down into that book and make it available to help as many people as I can.